First of all, is it me? Is it me changing 4.1? We talked about tangents and how it could be more than one. I might decide that cosine can't be more than one. It could be 4.1. Take the calculator. Put it on. Maybe the inverse tangent is 4.1. Uh, maybe that's in degrees. 76.290. Here we to solve the angle. This angle is a cosine at negative 0.22. So how do you find this angle if you know what the cosine is? Inverse cosine. Do it. Inverse cosine of negative one two two. Hundred two point seven. Okay, but it's supposed to be between one hundred eighty and two hundred seventy. Let's see what's going on here. What we just found was an angle of about hundred two point seven one. That's a little bit more than ninety. It has a cosine of negative 0.22, it doesn't really matter what the sine is. Uh, so an angle that has the same cosine is either going to be coterminal with this angle, we could go around and stop there, that angle would have the same cosine, so we could find an angle uh, is there. We could also find an angle that is right here. That angle also has the same cosine. It also has the same x value to this point right here. Negative point two two. Kind of a negative question, right? It would be the opposite of that. Mm -hmm. So I think the best approach here is to draw a picture for yourself. And if the angle that you're looking for is between one eighty and two seventy, and you know how big this angle is, the natural smart. Figure out what this red angle. Go 360, and when you come back, you know this is a magnitude one of 102.71. So if you come back, that much should be good. So 360 minus 102.71. And I subtract the 90, and that would give you that little thing right there. Okay? And then I can take 270 and subtract whatever that is. Take 180 minus this angle, and then we give you this, and then I can add that to 180. And then we do that. And then we do that. Any questions about that? Remember what that then just means? That basically the angle that you find by doing the inverse cosine, that's not what we want. We want an angle that has the same cosine, but it's in another uh, range of degrees. So we have the angle measure data. This is right triangle, so all those ratios apply. So which ratio are we going to use? The inverse tangent. Uh, it's going to be opposite and adjacent. Right? This triangle is kind of weird. It's uh, kind of upside down. I don't know what we're So here's our, here's our hypotenuse down here. Opposite and adjacent. So the inverse tangent of opposite and adjacent. And then equals.
summarize all the different kinds of triangles that we might solve for, uh, like this. Okay. And I'll come down to what information is given at the beginning. Okay. So if at the beginning we're given information about at least this much, an angle and its opposite side, we can use the probability uh, law of sines. That's when we find kind of tell that that's the case from just what the law of sine says. It says A over the sine of A, let's say, over the B, equals B over the sine of B. Well, angles and sides that have the same name are across from each other. Uh, there's one, two, three, four variables there. So to solve for one of those variables, we need to know what three of them are worth. And no matter how you look at it, you're at least going to know, need to know B and its opposite angle, or A and its opposite. So um, on the homework, uh, the first example we saw, an example of, uh, let's see, we were given angle A, angle C, and side C. This A and this B and this C. And again, this is 95. This is 35. This is so you can see we have an angle and its opposite side. And then we can use the loss um, We won't go through it again. We already did that. So uh, if there's still questions, feel free to ask questions to uh, I have not drawn this to scale because this is obviously not 95 degrees, but uh, it does. Um, what I want you to think about is, if I gave you these pieces of a triangle, like just an angle that's locked in at 95, so something like that, and an angle that's locked in at 35, okay, and obviously they have to be right next to each other, uh, and this side is 18, is there a triangle that's possible? It's definitely a triangle, like there's no, no way to fail, right? This, let's just build it. So this guy is 95. Uh, the angle next to that is 35, so maybe like that. And this side is definitely 18. That's for sure. This is for sure. This is, for sure. This is unknown. We don't know how long that is. And we don't know how long that is. And so another way to look at that is this could be as long as you want it to be. And this could be as long as you want it to be. I mean, whatever it needs to be. So in that case, it's definitely a triangle is possible. If it doesn't look like it, it's only because I haven't drawn it yet. So let's see why a triangle might not be possible. Let's look at uh, that other one that I didn't intend to put on the homework, but it was really good. Let's see what happens when we try to use the law of sines to solve this triangle. Let me give you a heads up. This might be possible. Uh, 105, we'll try and draw this. So 
So, if you go take go to, it tells you what the problem is. Well, answer. Well, our answer was 1.412. 1.142. You try to put 1.142. That's not in the domain of the inverse sign. Domain is domain. So we got an error, and so that tells us that B is an impossible angle. So we can look at some other reality. So, what would make this a possible triangle? Switch 13 to 11. Okay, so now the hypotenuse is longer than the other side. Let's try that. Just hypothetically, if this were to be 13 and this were to be 11, then that certainly seems impossible. There's got to be some angles, some other side lengths that are possible. So that means we'll switch uh, this for 11, this for 13. This for 11, I'm about to do that. That's 11, that's 11. So every 11, or 13 to 11, vice versa, 13, yeah. Okay, now let's do that. Okay, let's do that. Okay, now 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 let's
So when you're given an angle and it's opposite side, um, and this is obtuse, bigger than 90, once an angle is bigger than 90, it's the biggest angle. There's no way for another angle to be bigger than 90 if one of the angles is bigger than 90. You can't even have two angles that are 90. That would take up all the degrees and then left with a third angle. So if you're given an obtuse angle, and you're giving this opposite side, then the opposite side had better be What's that? The, one. the largest side. If it's not the largest side, it's not going to work. Opposite angle. Opposite side. And, and, and another side, the side side angle. Side side angle, the obtuse. There's two possibilities if it's an obtuse angle. Either there's a triangle or there's not. Right? Either the hypotenuse is long enough or it's not long enough. That's side side angle. It's called side side angle because if I start with this side and go to this side, I have a side and then another side and then an angle. Um, Go with, like if you started at this angle, mm. this is where I got my feet a little bit, we need to go like to the nearest next piece of information. So if I went around, uh, or if I went like this, side angle, I have to, to skip this side, this angle to get to the side. Um, but here, I just go from the side, I have to skip an angle to the side, and then there's my angle. Like a side to side angle. Like, um, you, I guess we, as you go around and you see what information you're given, you get more to that and you go to more times. But you can't skip over, I guess, two things to get to the next few things. Okay. So if I go from here, I'm going to skip over one unknown angle. Of the side. But if I start here, uh, or if I go from here to there, then I just get two things, an unknown side and an unknown angle. The um, there's a way to do these three things kind of like as close together as possible. We like to start at the side, the side and the angle, because we go the other way. And then, uh, Let's see what might happen if that angle is acute. Okay, so there's three possibilities. And to see those three possibilities, I'm going to use an illustration I made earlier.
I'm going to put these blocks on here to, to emphasize these are the things that we know for sure that cannot change. Okay? But if it doesn't have a lock on it, it's not a given piece of information, and therefore it can be whatever we need to be. Right? Okay. So if we're given this side and let's see. This side, this side, and this angle, side, side, angle. Let's see what happens. Right here. What's wrong with this side? What, what, what is causing? I mean, can we make a triangle out of it? Yeah. And what's wrong with that? Like, why can't we do that? Shorter than this side. Yeah, shorter than this side. Definitely needs to go longer because it's side of five. But if that side is long enough, then it can make a triangle. Okay? See what the triangle accomplished. But sketch. If that side is long enough, and we saw just now, that side was too short where you couldn't make a triangle and it was long enough when we were able to. Now let's look at the less than that. We'll find that we can e either, we can't make a triangle, we can make exactly one triangle, we can make two triangles. Okay. Um, let's look at And that's okay because there's, you know, this is not a, this is not an absolute given length. This length could be any. Figure out that it needs to be more than it, than it can. It's not a given. Okay. So, this is, this is the thing. We're given a side, a side, an angle. This side is long enough. We reach from here, well, down to this line somewhere. And we can make a triangle. What would make it so that we can't make a triangle? Too short. Sure. Okay, so looks like this one. It's too short. <laughs> right, it's trying as hard as it can to make it all the way down here. Um, what we're actually doing is probably the easiest way to find out that this is too short is you, you set up all the equations and you go to take the inverse line and it says here. Double check all our math and you did it right and just, okay, this is one of those pieces where that, well, that angle or that side, sorry, is too short. Um, see this one? It to be just long enough. Just long enough to do what? Mm -hmm. It would be 90 degrees. Well, you would have been given the side and the side and the angle that made a right triangle. Those three things. That's when we have exactly one side. Now, we could, and the book talks about how to figure out if there's one or two triangles or no triangles. Let's look at the case that this is a 90 degree angle. This is given, okay, this is given, this is given. Let's call this A, this is angle A, and we'll call this side B, and then angle B turns out to be 90 degrees. Okay, so if that happens to be 90 degrees, let's figure out how long this uh, side would be. Keep in mind, we're given this side, we're given this side, we're given this side. Um, so in a 90 degree triangle, the sine of A is equal to A over B, right? So the sine of A is equal to um, A over B. If you multiply by B on both sides, we get A by itself. So here, what you have here is kind of like a test. You say, if I take um, the sine of A and multiply it by B, and it comes out exactly equal to A, then this is the case where this is 90 degrees. I have one triangle. Okay. Uh, how about when it's when we can't make any triangles? 
how do we compare A, A and, the sin, and B times the sine of A? Well, this right here, A, see if, if it were equal, it would be exactly one triangle. If it were, uh, if A turns out to be less than this, then it's not long enough. Keep in mind, this, this, this A right here, this A is if you have a right triangle, then A will be exactly the B times the sine of A. So if it's not long enough to be that sine of A times B, then it's not possible to have a triangle. So this right here means that we have one B times the sine of A is bigger than A, so A is less than that. It's zero triangle. Uh, and here is the one triangle possibility. How big is A compared to B times the sine of A? How long is it compared to? This side, this straight down side, would be what you get to be times the sine of A. So A would be more of A is larger than that. A is larger than that. But here's the one other possibility. So this vertical side right here is equal to B times the sine of A. Bigger or smaller than that? Bigger. But, how many triangles can I make with it? Two. two. If you make two, why do you do that? Just to include a line straight down from the one triangle. So you can come over there. So you can make two. Yeah. This triangle and that triangle? Yeah. Okay, I think my picture is a little misleading. See yeah. that? That dotted line, like th this is a side and this is a side. Those are the only two sides. If this is not a part of the triangle, that dotted line I'm saying is how long the sides need to, be to go straight up and down. Straight, straight, straight down and get 90 degrees. Right so it's not actually, don't think of that as a side. Set aside unless it's this guy with a, a lot of mm -hmm. What we have is a, a side that's this long, a side that's this long, and an angle that's that big. And all that can't change. But like this side length down here can change, this angle up here can change, this angle down here can change to whatever it needs to be. Okay. So you can bring that down, change that angle to needs to be, now this angle is whatever it needs to be, this side is whatever it needs to be, and we have a triangle. You can make a second triangle with a, a side that's this long, a side that's this long, and an angle that's this big. Can anybody see how you can make a second triangle with those three pieces of the information? long enough to make a triangle, but it's also short enough to make a second triangle. Shorter than what? Shorter than B. So then do we get two triangles? Right? A, the given side, is um, bigger than the sine of A, the B times the sine of A. 
but it's also smaller than B. It's that perfect in between. It's within that range. So it doesn't have two But if uh, B times the sine of A is smaller than B, and that's smaller than A, like A is bigger than both of them. Bigger than this, bigger than B times the sine of A is only one. Also bigger than B, yeah, it's really long, long enough to make a triangle, but too long to squeeze in here somewhere and make another triangle. So in that case, you gotta have a, a line that's long enough. Like this, this side is across from the known angle. It's gotta be long enough to make a triangle. It might make exactly one. If it's really long, then it might also just make one. If it's not long enough, it can't make any triangles. But if it's just right, then it could make one triangle on one side. Okay, let's think about, about that. On one side, so this angle will be, what kind of an angle is this? Uh, acute. Acute, and on this side, when it makes another triangle, it's So let's look at a, an example where it can happen when we have the, the perfect condition, okay? Um, we don't have to, like, we don't have to memorize all this stuff. In the end, really, we just have to be kind of smart and don't forget about the same triangle. If there are two triangles, one of those triangles will have all three angles of um, If that's not, uh, we want to start at the three angles and then we can go from there. So let's find an example. It gives two sides uh, and an angle, um, and well, let, let's label this triangle and see if we've got a, a side side angle. I'm going to sketch it out real quick. side and a side and this angle. Uh, so it's a side side angle. 
Um, so you can see how this side here can kind of pivot. This angle could be anything, this angle could be anything, this side could be anything. Um, and so we have this kind of a situation. So it's possible that we could have two triangles, so it would be helpful to uh, draw a picture kind of like this. So you, you can only solve for, for angle B. Let's see what, what, what's involved in that. So we're going to solve for B. So we'll take the sine of B over 16. Sine of 40 over 13. We'll plug the 16 on both sides. Sine of 16, sine of B equals 16 and sine of 40. the triangles possible or is it still possible? Is there definitely a triangle that can be made of these two things? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, we found an angle that's possible, so it must be long enough to make a triangle. So far, nothing's really telling us that there might be a second triangle. Like, if, it, if there were a triangle possible, we would have gotten some error right here. We try to take the inverse sine of both sides, we'll figure out, well, obviously this would have been something that was bigger than one. Okay? So that would have told us there's no triangle possible. But nothing, nothing bad happened. We found an angle that works, and we found a triangle. So what might clue us into the fact that or the possibility that there might be another triangle? Well, all the angles are going to be 
be a key uh, to the, well, that's not, a, that's not needed. You don't need all labels to be a key. I guess this could have been obtuse, and still, there might be a negative triangle possible. Well, let's go back to this demonstration. Why are we, why were we able to, to swing this over and make a second triangle? So it was large enough to make a triangle, but what? Smaller than B, right? It was small <coughs> enough that it could fit in here. Right, so let's look at the one that we have. Is this, we, we can only go by the label, we can't go by any drew it. But by this number 13 and this number 16, and that there's a triangle possible, so it is long enough to reach down to the bottom side. Is it short enough to also fit in here? Yeah. yeah. So, it means that there's definitely a second triangle and we need to find it. So, just to get that page. so the work on the previous page, we found this triangle. So here's what's going to happen. Well, if there's two triangles, the first triangle we'll find. Think about how we found this angle. So this is always going to be how did we find this angle? Law of sine. Yeah, the law of sine. What was the final step? Like, what did we do just before we figured out this 52 plus 2 x? Um, so this was, oh, that's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're over here, this is 52.2 what? Inverse sine. We took the inverse sine. Think about that inverse sine. Remember how we talked about the inverse sine? When you take the inverse sign, you only get angles from negative 90 to 90. Right? So uh, it's never going to tell you if that angle is bigger than 90 degrees. Right? So think about it. If we swing this guy over, what kind of an angle would that be? It passes 90 degrees. What kind of an angle would this have to be? Up to. It's always going to be up to. Right? That other triangle is always going to be. If there's two triangles, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, what things are changing? Well, obviously this angle is not 52.29. Mm -hmm. This angle isn't going to be 87.71, it's going to be something else. And this side isn't going to be 20.21 anymore. But all the three things that we were given in the beginning are still true. So it would be 13. That side's still 13. Now we're going to find this other angle. We're going to use the stuff that we already know. We already know that this side would be over here. And this angle would be how much? Have our notes out and taking notes. 52.29. If that's 52.29, then how long is this? This dotted line that I've drawn? 13, just like this one. 13. Right? It's called an isosceles triangle and an isosceles triangle. These two sides are the same. And what else is the same? The same one right here. This is also 52.29. Take 180 and we subtract 52.29. What is it? 127. 71. B. All that. Now that we
we know that? that this is, this is 127.71. We figure out this angle. We make sure that 40 plus 127.71 plus this. What's left to find? Uh, this bottom side right here. So that last step will be the same as the last step on the first. Step. So um, C over the sine of 12 to 9 equals, and we use 13 over 3, 13 over the sine of 40. So for C, So if we are given a side-side angle, we can draw this kind of a thing where this side can be swung on this axis here. It's short enough to, it's, it's long enough to make a triangle, and it's short enough to fit in here and make another triangle. So that's when this side is less than this side. It's short enough to fit in here and make another triangle. Okay. So, Here's what I would suggest. I will try So first make sure you have a side side angle. And that means you can draw a picture like this. Where you know this angle and the side next to it and the side across from that angle. Kind of leave it out there to remind you that we're still trying to find this angle and this angle over here. So just do our work. <coughs> and if we find, if we find a triangle, then great, you found one triangle. And maybe that's the only triangle. Okay, you're done. But maybe there's another triangle, and how can we tell if there's another triangle? Let's say this is A, and this is A sine A, and this is A sine B. Well, that we know because we've done a triangle. Right? If there's no errors, here's the thing. If you get an error and you've done on your math right, you have found how many triangles exist. Mm -hmm. yeah. No triangles exist. If you, if you check the inverse sign at the last step to find that angle and it says error, it means those pieces, they can't fit together. In the but if it does work, you find a triangle, great, so you know it's long enough. So if A is less than B, How do we go about doing that? Well, this is angle B. And we just take 180 minus B. And that's the other B. This will always be acute. And when you do this, you always get an obtuse angle. This one over here is acute. This one over here, you got this obtuse angle. I'm going to tell you there's definitely 
two triangles and you take out your notes as the silly thing to say. Have your notes out. Um, Find out that it's possible to find one of the triangles. How do we know there's definitely going to be a second time? Yeah, you can imagine that if 85 is long enough to make this kind of a triangle, then it's short enough to make it this kind of a triangle. Okay. So now 85 is, is shorter than 88, so maybe it, it won't make a triangle. Maybe it's too short. But if it's long enough, it's not too short and it can make a triangle, it can definitely swing over and make a second triangle. Okay. Here's how it's always going to go. We're always going to use a lot of science to solve this thing, and we'll always find this acute version of that triangle. So this, the version of the triangle this is an acute triangle. Because the way we find it is we take the inverse sign, and we take the inverse sign, and we only ever get a, an angle that is less than 90. Okay. So uh, this is in the scene. And this is uh, in the little A inside A. So sine of C over 88 equals sine of 70 over 85. Sine of C equals sine of 70 times 88 over 85. So right now, if we're paying close attention, we found an angle, means the triangle is possible, which now we know there's definitely a second triangle uh, that we need to find. Because this is long enough to make a triangle, it's short enough to fit over here. We can definitely make a triangle. Second triangle. First, let's find the rest of the stuff. So this is 76.62, which means we can definitely find this, because we all have to have the one E. So what will this be? Um,
Now you can find the other triangle, which we know we find by bringing this side and seeing it over here. We know this angle is 49.77. This then is also 49.77. Or sorry. If this is 76.62. So if we take 180 and subtract 76.62, we'll find this guy. How big is that? And last to find this side right here. It's the same thing as here, except instead of doing 3.38, we use this one. Okay. So this sine six point six two degrees equals eighty five over sine seventy degrees eighty five over sine six point six two over Your homework is finished up that 13.5 packet. Oh. Remember that. Let's just run down this real quick. Just approach every problem pretty much the same. Use the law of sine, set up those equations, solve the unknown. If you take the inverse sine at some point and you get an error in your calculator, what does that tell you? No sine or positive. You get no error. What does that tell you? Mm -hmm. okay. So now you are, you have found this angle, it's working out. We definitely have one triangle. The next thing you need to do is check the Okay. Check. How to describe this is best with a picture. Now the labels might change, they might give you C and B or A, and like the letters themselves may change. But if we can draw this picture, say this one. This is A, this would be side A, and they give us the side B. And those are there's other stuff, those are different things. Then, if A, you've already found that there is a triangle. So if A is less than B, then it is long enough to make a triangle, short enough to make a second. And then we find it. We find it by going back to this triangle. Whatever this angle is, we take 180 minus that angle, and it'll give us this other. Think the, the, think the thing that makes it easiest to see is if you can draw it like this. If they give you an angle, draw that angle. Okay. And then, like, just start with it there. I mean, just for consistency. When you talk about my class, I'll put it there. That's just the way I see it. Uh, and I think it'll be really smooth and consistent if you go ahead and put the angles they give you there. And 
then they give you two other sides, put one here, and put the opposite one right there. Okay. They give you an angle there, put the side A, and they give you this side. And you could put it down there, but that could definitely, like, I don't know, just make it inconsistent. It doesn't really matter where you put it, but if you put it here, then, like I said, it makes it consistent. And then when I talk about it, I draw my pictures, then you'll be able to see what I'm talking about when I say that this side, right here is, is short enough to swing over and then this side 